we, we being pioneers, we're, we're not on a salary. We're, we're on a, a little bit of a stipend. We have been given a maintenance, which is great. But uh, uh, we're following the tradition. I guess it goes right back to the Apostle Paul and probably before that, where, where to serve in ministry and mission, uh, we also have to uh, have other ways yeah. of uh, providing an income. But other forms of ministry that provide an income. So we're going to briefly tell you about some of the other things we're doing. And then we'll look at how, what have we learnt uh, and how, what can we share with you about mission as we've gone on. So, Barbara, tell us about the other jobs that you are doing. And I'll put the slide up. Well, I've only got three jobs, really. <laughs> Although, sort of in a way, there's a fourth. But, yeah. Um, so, I'm currently working uh, as of uh, from February... Uh, I'm working for World Baptist Church, which is a Baptist church in Western Supermare. Uh, I'm working two and a half days a week as their transitional minister. Um, now, I, I do have a, a, an interest in transitional ministry. That's ministry for a, a defined period while a, a church is going through some sort of transition. Sometimes that's because something's gone wrong. Uh, it might not be that. It might be just that the church knows it needs to change and transition in some way. Or in this case, it's simply because the church has gone into pastoral vacancy um, with a very small leadership team uh, and felt that some extra resource would be really helpful. Um, so I'm working uh, with the, the leadership team uh, to help them through the, the pastoral vacancy process, the settlement process. Um, and uh, and helping to keep the show on the road and to encourage them and uh, and encourage some thinking uh, and some moving forward so they don't just mark time while they're in pastoral vacancy. Uh, it all seems to be um, going very well at the moment. We are talking to someone with a view to the, the ministry, um, which is really, really encouraging and also might mean that I'll be out of a job in a few months, but that's, that's good, that's all right. Um, so yes, these sort of roles that I'm undertaking kind of by the nature of it, if I'm uh, engaging in transitional work, it, it means it's going to be temporary. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to come and go and there will probably be gaps. Uh, but at the moment, uh, world is a great blessing uh, to me and I'm enjoying that role very much. Uh, I'm also working for Webnet one day a week. Uh, Webnet is the equivalent of the NBA, uh, the West of England uh, Baptist Network, they call themselves now. Uh, and this is their glossy team photo, and there I am on the, uh, on the end of the, the row there. Colour coordinated. Colour coordinated pink T-shirt. Um, you can see Candy up there that we, uh, that we talked about, and Lindsay uh, is also on the staff of Webnet as well, Lindsay and her husband Andrew we're working with. Um, so the work I'm doing for Webnet is administrative work, um, but particularly uh, engaged with the, their ministerial recognition uh, committee process uh, and their mission grants process. Uh, so it's, I think it's helpful for them having somebody come in, even temporarily, who understands <coughs> Baptist things a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, previously in my work for Scripture Union, that was an administrative job, so I count it as one of my superpowers. <laughs> um, and we're also working with a little church called Stonehouse Baptist Church. That's up near Stroud, uh, a little bit north of where we are. Um, this is a church who've gone through uh, lots of difficulties, some conflicts, some difficulties uh, since a previous minister died suddenly uh, a few years ago in their history uh, and have come to a point where um, they either need some sort of fresh beginning or the church will probably close. And then there's Paul's pilgrimage walking. Yay. Come and tell us about your pilgrimage walking, Paul. So this is a bit of a learning curve for me. As, as you know, I love walking, and uh, uh, ever since I uh, experienced the Camino de Santiago, uh, the, the idea of pilgrimage walking, which is walking with the aim of, of, of changing and being transformed and encountering God along the way. Um, and uh, the aim is, with all these things that we're doing, is to engage in ministry. So I want to uh, be uh, able to organise walks that enable other people to encounter God in some way while they're on the journey. So there are stops where we think and pray and discuss things. There are sometimes prayers that are prayed. Sometimes it's just about being in nature or being in the places that we go to that inspires people. 
Okay, well, well, we'll share a few mission principles, I think, next, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, let's have some refreshments. <laughs> let's, let's, it's a nice eat of food and drink. Well, some missional principles, and I think it's back to Barbara to kick us off with the first two of these, isn't it? Uh, so this is seven or eight things that we've learnt along the way while we've been in uh, Portlis, Edinburgh. So here's one you would never have thought of. Prayer. <laughs> it does sound obvious, um, but it's, it's been such a, 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 a clear thread through what we've, uh, what we've experienced and what we've been doing, um, that prayer needs to come first, um, that uh, nothing, it seems, will happen uh, except by prayer and without prayer. Um, so we have we have started uh, by praying, praying a lot together with Lindsay and Andrew, uh, praying with other people, um, discovering a minister's group in Porter's Head that pray every week. Uh, so joining in with that, uh, finding a uh, a group these these folk, uh, a, a sort of remnant of Baptist folk in Pill, uh, who, as Paul said, are meeting. Uh, together with the, the Methodist Church in a, a partnership with them, which they, they now call Church on the Green. Um, but these, these, these people, the Baptist folk uh, that are committed to, to this church in, in Pill, uh, are meeting every week. They happen to leave in, live in Clevedon a few miles away, but they're meeting every week uh, early in the morning to pray, uh, to pray for Pill, to pray for the people in the church and to pray for the place uh, and the people in the place. Uh, that uh, that God would open the doors uh, and uh, uh, would do a new work in this place, this place with all this history, and uh, and so we're going down to Clevedon every week that we possibly can and meeting with them uh, and praying together, and uh, and it's been wonderful to see their heart for the place um, and to join with them, uh, and God seems to be saying. You know, find the people who are praying and join with them, pray with them. And, uh, and out of that uh, friendship that's grown with those folk, um, we've been introduced to the other churches uh, in Pill and uh, we've been able to uh, get involved a bit. Uh, there's a, a market uh, monthly on a Saturday uh, where the churches together take a little stall uh, and just try to get into conversations with people while they're, while they're at the market. It's a, it's a relatively small affair. Um, people come and walk around and there's a little coffee stall place and uh, people mingle and chat. And, uh, and folk from the churches are just going around and, uh, and being there and getting into conversations. So, you know, we can join with that and, mm -hmm. and do that, which is a great gift because, uh, you know, that's what we want to do. Um, and uh, and the opportunity has opened up to uh, to help to run an alpha course in the village, which uh, the churches are doing together, uh, and it's happening uh, actually located in the church on the green, uh, this little Baptist Methodist church. Um, but uh, but Paul is is helping to lead that, and through that being advertised and Paul's name, you know, email address being on the banner. Uh, another couple who are a Christian couple who live in Pill but um, but worship in uh, in Bristol and are involved in a, a church in Bristol. They've sort of got in touch and said, "Oh, you know, obviously something is is happening in Pill, and this is really good. And who are you? And we'd love to connect with you. And we're going to plan a uh, a worship evening and just going to get together with this couple and and whoever wants to come from any of the churches." Uh, and have a, an evening of worship and prayer uh, in the church on the green in Pill uh, as a result of you know these different connections and we just really want to pray with people um, so we're praying with the people in Pill and we're praying uh, with the ministers in Portis Head uh, and we've started praying uh, in a weather spoons in Portis Head on a Monday morning to start the week uh, and asking people to, to gather anybody who wants to pray for Portis Head and two or three other people are gathering and we're just praying that God will put it on more people's hearts uh, to come and pray together for this town and, uh, and so prayer and connecting with people uh, people of prayer uh, is at the roots uh, of what we're doing and I think we would see that as just absolutely vital, absolutely essential 
uh, for any work that's happening. Um, there you go. There's the invitation to pray uh, at Weatherspoons every Monday. And um, you have to remind me what this says because my eyes won't help me fall. At the bottom it says, many people look but only a few see. <clears throat> Yes, that's right. That's why I put that slide in. So, yeah, there's that sense that this is, this is about attending to what God is doing. Um, attending, watching, listening, looking out for what God is at work already doing. Uh, that we can, we can look without seeing, can't we? Jesus has a lot to, to say about sight and blindness uh, in the Gospels. And uh, it's possible to look without seeing. Uh, so praying that God will help us to really see, uh, to really attend. Uh, and praying that he will open up the connections uh, and the people and uh, the ways in which we are to serve him. Um, we've talked a bit. This is, this is the weather spoons. This is the weather spoons where we're praying. Um, and... Uh, we're That's a bad one, yes. yes. <laughs> um, and and the, the word has come to us a number of times as we've been praying with people to, uh, about loitering with intent. There's something about being present uh, in this place and of just, you know, loitering, just being there, just being around with the intention of bumping into people. Uh, with the not literally, but just um, uh, making oneself available so that God can put us in the right place. Um, you know, realizing that beavering away at our desk in our home in the manse is not going to help us to meet with people and connect with people, so we've got to be out there. And it's quite hard because there's an awful lot to do. You know, there's a lot to do to keep you stuck in front of all of the emails and the death. So, so pray for us that we will be able to be present in these communities that God's put us in. Um, because it, it's not as easy as, you know, it seems very easy just to loiter there, to be there. Actually, in, pres in practice, it's not. You have to be quite intentional to get out there. Please pray for us that we can loiter with intent um is this you it is. Oh, excellent <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're a little bit up and down <laughs> like punch and judy aren't we really? um so yes uh next couple of thoughts are we we have very intentionally said in salt house that we want to make disciples jesus called us to make disciples of all nations that's that's what he told us to do he didn't tell us to build churches or grow churches he told us to make disciples uh, he said I'll, I'll i'll build a church but you go and make disciples and i think christians often get that the wrong way around that we spend a lot of our energy trying to um to focus on keeping churches going uh, and running churches uh, and we don't always, we're not always very good at making disciples or even being disciples ourselves. Followers of Jesus, followers of the way. And that, that's just a, a little response when we got together to pray with the Portly Said Minister and just said, ask, what, what's God calling us to in Portly Said? And, and you'll see it says uh, about being involved in uh, uh, the whole of life, being ambassadors. Um, the, the, the Christian life is to be lived in daily life, in the places where we work, in the places where we socialise, in the places where we have our leisure time. Uh, when we go to the shops, when we uh, um, are a part of our clubs and groups, that's, you know, for me, the running club, for Barbara, the, the choir, that's where we are to make a difference for Jesus. And so we're explicitly trying to do that with our uh, Salt House um, expression of church. And next picture, just, it, this was something that came, was given to me one breakfast on my walk when I was doing my uh, Camino Portly Said. One of the people I say with uh, has these lovely mugs, I'm a blessing. I'm generous, I'm a good listener, I'm an encourager, etc., etc. Um, and uh, it was lovely to receive that blessing, but also to, to be reminded that's what God wants me to be with the people that I meet today once I've had my cup of tea. Uh, and uh, we are called to help each other to live well in daily life when we're separated, when we're apart. Church is not just about what we do when we're together. 
Okay, next point is, is looking outwards. Uh, again, fairly straightforward and obvious, but the churches that are outward looking, or, or the groups that are outward looking, are the ones that are seeing people coming to faith and are growing. If we're just concerned about what we do ourselves and are looking after ourselves and our own interests, um, then we're not going to see uh, the kingdom grow or people uh, being changed and transformed. And so that was a little um, uh, graffiti sheet that was as our... Uh, Induction service, so we read that passage from Matthew chapter 5, and that was some of the responses that people put down. Uh, you can see it says there, keeping open house, uh, and, and being a presence for the people. In other words, get out there and be present where people are. Okay, back to you. Being flexible and adaptable. Um, I think probably Paul is more flexible than I am getting old and inflexible. But, um, yeah, just the sense that um, we need to be flexible and adaptable. We need to be ready to uh, hear from God and then go in the direction that, that he presents for us uh, and not be overly... Um, planful and rigid and have a set plan uh, that we'll then see through so people keep asking us well what what does this salt house church thing look like and we sort of say well that's an interesting question we wish we knew <laughs> um, and um, the the structure such as it is is around this monthly gathering that we've talked about and our weekly groups um, in people's homes or maybe not in people's homes, maybe as people do a walk, um, or maybe in some other context, um, and we don't know yet. But um, having something which um, is, um, is flexible and able to adapt to the, the situation that, that God presents us with and, and can be uh, moulded around the relationships that, uh, that God gives to us. Uh, this is a, a, a church in Bristol, um, which wasn't too flexible and adaptable, and uh, it ends up as a climbing wall, a climbing venue. You know, that's what happens when you're not flexible, uh, when you don't, you know, when you're focused on a building which then becomes uh, unfit for the purposes that you might want to, to give to it. So, um, we need to be flexible and adaptable. Uh, simple. Um, we want church to be simple. We, we think we've so often made church so complicated. We spend so much of our time invested in rotors and keeping the show on the road. Uh, so we want what we do to be simple uh, because if it's simple, then we can replicate it. When we meet together, on a Sunday evening or, you know, whatever evening it is or whatever in our, in our small, simple group. Um, you know, we really want to, to eat together and to meet around a table. So we, we have some simple soup and bread and that's it because we want it to be easy for somebody else to be able to do it. And if we put on a lavish three-course meal every week, then somebody else has got to think, oh, I've got to be able to do that in order to do this. So it's got to be simple. Um, when we uh, lead Bible study, when we open the scriptures together, it's got to be really simple because we don't want people to need a theology degree before they can lead that group. It's got to be simple so that it can be replicated, so that it can grow, the groups can grow and divide and multiply and, uh, and other people can lead things because we want to grow beyond four groups. And there's only four of us lead, so we need to, to multiply leaders. Uh, so it needs to be simple. And uh, <coughs> finally, we need to be dependent on God. Paul. You do it. No, you do it. <laughs> no, you do it. Uh, we kind of talked about this with the, with the whole seven bore experience at the beginning, that, that, that God is the one who uh, changes lives. God is the one whose kingdom we're serving. God is the one who uh, uh, does the work of transformation in people and in communities. And uh, uh, we're foolish if we think we can do that. 
So uh, it means uh, living a life where we're prepared to, uh, uh, through the listening, to uh, uh, maybe get involved in things that we might not have chosen to do, or to go to places that we might not have chosen to go to, or to get involved with people that we might not necessarily have wanted to get involved with, but going where, where God takes us. And uh, th those particular slides uh, of pictures are from the, the Pentecost um, prayer event that we had in Port said the churches came together around something called Thy Kingdom Come, which you might have heard of. It's, it's a national um, period of prayer leading up to Pentecost Sunday. So asking God to send his spirit afresh and uh, that sense of needing the life of the spirit. Otherwise, what we're doing is a bit of a waste of time. Okay, and then uh, walking by faith, not by sight, which means that uh, we, we don't necessarily see where we're going to be going. We don't, we, we don't know whether there's going to be uh, a church at the end of all that we're doing or not. Um, but for me, it's interesting. I, I feel no pressure to have to achieve anything because ultimately I'm trying to follow where God's leading uh, and, and saying, right, God, it's your work. You do the work. I'll be available and part of it. Uh, if a church results, great. If, if we don't see a church but something else happens, uh, maybe things happen within the community, like, like the, um, the Willow uh, Garden Project or other things, that's great. Uh, if it's a not a success in the eyes of uh, some, the way some people might view success, that you end up with lots of people in a building worshipping God Sunday by Sunday, that, that's not a problem if God's choosing to do something else. So uh, uh, the challenge is walking that walk of faith and going where God leads us, wherever that might be. Okay, so those are the principles, I think. And we've kind of come to the end of the presentation a bit then. Father God, we thank you for tonight and thank you for the support of these wonderful people, and particularly the church here, and also you know, folk who've come from Stocksfield in particular, uh, the churches and the folk that are uh, kindly and generously giving their time to uh, pray for me and Barbara and to follow what we're doing. Thank you that... It's true of all of us. Whenever we step out into daily life, we're not doing it on our own. We're doing it supported by the prayers of others. And even when we don't know who they are, the, the angels are praying for us. And, and Jesus, you say you are interceding for us. And the Spirit is interceding for us. So all this prayer is going on as we engage in the, uh, uh, the daily living as disciples of you, Lord Jesus. So will you equip us? Will you help us to put into action whatever we feel is uh, your call to us tonight and will you lead and guide us by your spirit into the things you have for us over these coming days. And now from the screen, Lord our God, supreme over all things, look upon us, the humble and lowly, and put new strength into our souls to complete your purpose for us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we've got three or four minutes left and so I just want to invite us uh, with, with a bit of space, a bit of uh, uh, an opportunity for others if you wish to, to pray. Barbara and I would certainly value your prayers for us, uh, so if any of you want to, to pray about anything that we've talked about, please lead us in that if you feel comfortable praying out loud or we can pray in the quietness if we have quiet uh, and then we'll close in a couple of minutes time. So let's just have a bit of space for uh, a final uh, open time of praying, bringing these issues, concerns, opportunities, thoughts to God. Thank you very much. And if you want to keep in touch, we, we send out a newsletter uh, every few months. So uh, uh, you can uh, either get in touch with us or through Peter here at Beacon Loft or... Uh, um, We've put a piece of paper at the back oh, right. there, a uh, pen. So if you there want you to go. give us your email address and your name... Uh, if you're not on our prayer letter list and would like to be, then please do. And, uh, and we'll gladly send you uh, mm -hmm. our letter. Um, we're, it's, it's three or four times a year. Um, so when we get We're not to going it. to clog your inbox <laughs> every, every couple of weeks. And we won't anything. pass on your details to marketing companies or uh, <laughs> anything else like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. Anyway, thank, thank you. you. Again. We God's really appreciate you coming out tonight.